How's it going folks? Today I wanted to cover the differences between cutting an average size rotor and one of these monster rotors that we have today. This one here is a pretty big rotor. It's almost a foot. It's almost 12 inches. Machine. Most of these machines won't really have a problem. It's kind of getting to the upper limit of what you can do with some of the older wimpier machines this is where having a one horsepower motor is really handy is when you get to larger sizes then we have this stuff today which is 14 inches it's just on this one's just under 14 inches it's a transit van rotor i believe and these things are really giving people a lot of grief trying to cut this area here is very large and this is the source of all the chattering issues everybody's going to have so i'm going to cover properly mounting stuff that's bigger and it there's a lot of stuff to cover so just bear with me clean it first both sides This does two things for us. One, it keeps the rotor straight and true on the machine, and the other is it gives us a good surface on which to clamp. We need this rotor to be clamped in there very solidly to prevent it from chattering. So the dimension of our cups and everything has to be taken into consideration. Now compare that to this smaller rotor, That's where things get tricky. These springs are nice. Um, I tape the ends so that I can see where the ones that are separatable are. If I'm gonna cut a bigger rotor, I'm gonna need to add one more link to this so it's not too tight. This cup, um, I like this. It's really solid. It's got a big shoulder in there so that the back wall of this is really stable. It's billet aluminum. The centering cone works nice. Um, this is really a, a very stable platform for smaller stuff. When you get to bigger rotors, you need a lot more stability. Where this will cut most of the smaller stuff without a problem, it's not going to handle the big stuff. The big stuff, you're going to need some real tooling. This is a big, heavy steel cup. It's got a big shoulder in here and a nice face here to go on the machine. It fits on there really tight, really snug on the shaft. That's gonna give us a nice stable platform to build our stack from. If I want this rotor on the machine perfectly true, this cup is key. It's the, on the only place that's true on the machine is this face right here. So I need this face to be clean, I need this to be clean, I need to have this fit up there solid, no dirt and crap in there. Just a nice, clean, solid contact. This face needs to be cut to true to that. So it gets mounted on here, and then periodically, when this gets beat up from people banging it around, you come in with your cutter head and cut this face back to true and then bevel this edge with a file, dress it with a file so it doesn't cut people. Now, with the smaller one, this goes on the machine first. Doing the bigger stuff, I want the steel cup in there first. And I want this on there gently without banging everything like that. And then this, we have different springs available for different weights of rotors um, this is the generic one um, we've got one for doing big rotors that you can barely compress by hand
We're going to need a one inch spacer for this. The tooling we used for smaller stuff is not going to cut it with these rotors getting huge. We're getting into like trash can lids and manhole, manhole cover sizes now. So I wanted to point this out before he goes on. What he did there when he span, he, he was spinning the rotor as he tightened it down. This is critical for centering that rotor on your mounting system. This, I add an extra link. I like to keep mine taped. The ones that are separatable have tape, and then the one that I add has tape in the middle. And it's also separatable. So my chain doesn't have, my silencer spring doesn't have too much tension anywhere. It's nice and balanced out. My rotor is on the machine really, really solid. Now I'm going to check my travel distance. And make sure that I have enough travel to finish the rotor in both directions. This machine has extended travel. I've, ex I've maxed out in the restoration on this machine. I maxed out its travel distance and I attached the guide bar to the carriage for increased stability. That allows me to cut these big rotors without having to worry about uh, excessive issues with chattering. Next, I'm gonna check my belt speed for a rotor this big. I gotta slow the machine down. So I'm gonna put on its slowest spindle RPM. Check and make sure my rotor's on the machine true. It is. Double check, make sure everything's clear, nice. Okay, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna, that's tight. Find my zero. Maybe, there it is. Touching off the rotor just barely to find my zero. Now I'm going to make sure that I don't have to deal with the rough edge. I'm just going to finish off this way. Zoom on in. Make sure I'm clearing both brake pad surfaces. This side. I'm going to go back in a little bit. Find the interior depth. Maybe reset my zero. Go off the end. Take about three and a half lines. Something like that. A nice decent cut. I don't want to cut too thin because I'll, I'll have to deal with the rotor's surface hardness and that will cause me a problem. So I'm going to make a fast cut making sure to get this all the way in here and let it go. I'll get you some better light on that if I can.
listen to the cut, you can hear it would really like to start chattering, but the tooling's just eating up the chatter, the vibration, before it becomes a secondary harmonic. It wants to, because this is a tough rotor to cut. It's not very stable through this section right here. But this tooling is just so stable, it just, it just doesn't want to develop into a secondary harmonic. That is a nice looking cut for a rough cut. That's really, really nice. Both sides came out pretty much exactly the same. Because the machine is spinning at a slow RPM, I'm not gonna do a demonstration of a fast cut because that would be like a 10 or 15 minute longer video of the thing making all that annoying racket. But yeah, you can cut bigger rotors if you want on a regular machine but your tooling's got to be up for the task um, I want stuff that's more stable this stuff was made to be as stable as possible um, we're using mass on the inside and we're using the compressibility on the outside in this billet aluminum cup to give us some dampening the self-centering cone is actually a really nice, convenient way to do the whole thing so you don't have to spend all your time searching for stuff. It's just put the right stack together here and off you go to the races. This inner cup also makes the shaft more stable, making the whole process um, of cutting these bigger rotors into a, a no, no big deal. There's no reason to fear them if you're just following the basic rules and have tooling that's up for the job. You can cut these right away. Thanks for your time. Uh, look out for more brake lathe tips and tricks videos. Um, I got some more coming out. Hit like and subscribe. Thanks.